Right, so that's those taken off. Been round up to eat everywhere. We're all happy with it. it is. So what we're going to do is just put a little bit of grey paint. Obviously, I haven't sanded off the back half because we're going to keep it the same. On this front ones again. So literally just a loaded up a, a little bit. And we've just got a tiny bit down in this gap that runs underneath as well, where it joins the bottom. So we just want to put a bit in there as well. To act as the tiniest bit of filler, almost a surfacing type of filler than rather a proper filler. Just some more around that front as well. Pick up some nice thick paint. Generally very, very happy with the way it's all gone together. A um, little bit more care and attention all around has paid dividends to certain areas of the kit where I've built it before and had various problems. So I'm just going to poke a little bit more down there. Just where it all joins in. Buff it together. We just put some around this entire area, just like that. So we'll let that dry and come back to it. Okay, so we're just sanding off now the actual um, the acrylic that we've got on there to check the seams and just do a little bit of seam filling with the acrylic. As you can see there, we just filled in uh, this one down here just a little bit. So the same, if you wet it a little bit, it'll just help it off in the areas where you don't need it <clears throat> to be doing much work. It'll just cut through it a little bit quicker. Then obviously your areas where you do need it to stick in there. Um, I wouldn't actually wet it and let it literally sand itself off. So if we just do this area here, so there we go, we're all in there. And then all we'll do, we're going to go around now, um, as I've done on this side, uh, with a clean piece of uh, kitchen towel. Uh, wet it a, li uh, a little bit and it will just get rid of all the dust and it help it come out the grooves and what we can do is whip down all the grooves and just do a tiny bit of rescribing to make sure they're all nicely cleaned out so they're ready for the paint to go on over the top but if you keep uh, a damp cloth handy it will just get rid of all the bits of dust and debris and grime and it will help clean out panel lines of various bits and pieces because if you leave it on it gets uh, to be quite a, a nasty state. But there we go, that's those two nicely filled in and done. Same with the underside, we're just cleaning those out now, um, all ready. And then we can just get the other few parts on and then we can paint up this canopy area, get the canopies fitted and we're getting in the area of spray. Okay, so we're going to put on the... Uh, actual um, the HUD into it so we can then get obviously the, the front windscreen over the top. I'm going to use the kit part instead of using the film because obviously the kit part is more realistic to the real thing because it's incredibly uh, a thick piece of uh, glass on the real thing. So what we're going to do is take a, just a little drop um, to stand in here and we're just going to put a little bit just on where the, the bottom of it is going to fit. And what I've got here you can see there, I could just bring it in a bit. As you can see, I've got a little blob of a um, little bit of white tack there. So, all we're going to do now is just going to lean this in, just plonking it down onto it, and we're just going to lean it back a little bit so it's touching the actual white tack about the right angle obviously because it's going to be flexible we can move it anyway but there we go that shows that in there we're going to let that go hard and then we've got some tiny little uh, photo etch parts which are the side bars which hold it um, and they can then go onto the side and we can use just a tiny bit of super glue to do that once that's all dried and set then we'll come back and we'll just put a little bit of clear green tamiya clear, uh, clear green um, to give it that sort of hue that they actually get so we'll leave that nicely if we're all happy it's all square just need to maneuver just a little bit just like that and we just poke that out of the way for the moment um, obviously centre seam we've taken out of here polished it and it's had two dips into clear um, so that's that done usual way we're going to actually um, take this up I've got here some uh, little bit of six mil so we're just going to uncut ourselves a piece okay Obviously, what, there is little tabs and everything. I'm going to do all of them totally after we've finished. I'm not going to worry about them now. Make sure you're totally dry before you mask out. These have been drying completely overnight because the worst, last thing you want to do is to be in a situation where it's actually 
still a little bit tacky. Now what I do, if you can see there, I curve it round just a little bit and then just gently crimp the outsides and then pinch obviously the overlap in the middle and then continue to work my way round and that way you get a nice gentle curve all the way round that front edge and then you can push it down and say so you get the nice curve if you used to do it you might get the step effect but just tap it down on the outside and curve it round the usual thing hold it up to the light so you can see exactly where your cut is okay then we can cut it off and we can just use the rest of it then to work over the top this will be the top bar in some ways it's nice one of this because we've gone over them all we can do we can just actually follow those if you're happy with their position we can follow the tape against the other part of the tape to just cut down and we do the same on the bottom just on like that then we'll fill in the actual area same goes with the back one so we'll get them all taped up Right, so we're working with some of the, the PE parts. Um, quick little tip, um, when you're doing tubes and things like that, there's two ways of doing it. So if I show you both ways. Um, the first thing is, is also get something that's the right diameter and just literally put it on and push it round with your fingers and you can manipulate it. As long as it's something quite tough in between and it isn't going to bend. And in that way, there we go, we've made a nice little tube, which is what we'll be inserting up the back there shortly. Um, things like we've done in here, we've got the actual engine part in there. If I just show you roughly how we did that, we move that carefully out of the way. Okay, so all we do, you have your, your sheet of photo etch just like this. So keeping it as flat as you can and try not to um, obviously buckle it and put creases in and things. As soon as you put creases into photo etch, it's extremely hard to get them all out again. Um, and then you're really gonna have trouble fitting it in places and things like that. So we've got that there, if I just nick off this here. Now, I know there's gonna be lots of people saying, no, I don't do it that way and all that, but this is just the way I do it, okay? All I do is a tube here, and then all we do, put it over the top of it, like this. Okay, right in the middle of it, like that. And then we're just gonna wrap it around. Now, I know what you're thinking. It doesn't fit. It's not supposed to again. Trust me on this one. So, okay, we've got a big gap there. But what we've done, we've given it a rough um, circle that we need to do. Now, if I just clear out a bit of space, I'll bring you in a bit tighter. So there we go. So we've got it in and we've got a, a basic curve to it. So what we can now do is literally just ease it together. Just wiggle it together and push down slightly. And then obviously making sure you've got it around the right way. We can ease it, overlap it slightly just to get it in there. Okay. And then we're just going to work it into the hole and push it in just like that. And I know what you're thinking there. It doesn't look very nice as you can see. So then obviously you get your finger in there and we're going to pull it apart and push it down to the thing and you actually corkscrew your finger or whatever you want to use in there to sort of bring it down and until you get to that to the point where you've actually got a tiny little gap where you see that on the bottom there's a thing and then what you can do if you get your scissors or some flat object you should be able to push it down and you actually be able to bring that together then obviously if you get things that go down to the far end that you can do and you can just run it round and wrap it round like that and obviously we just need to drop this edge to line it all up and then as soon as we push down it's going to actually go flat to the back if you like and then knit together like this and that's what we've done there and it's in easy as that and i've got to take them back out to be honest because i've got to put these uh, flat parts in uh, they need to go in first because they won't actually go over the side of it so I'll just hook those out in a moment to do it but that just gives you an idea of how to get them in without getting creases and things like that as I say if it doesn't matter if you get a small one because then you can get in there then if you use like I've got here or any type of even a bigger one might be better um, literally in there and you can run it round and make sure it's pushing all to the outside and then it will it will usually just one part will slip up higher than the other and then what it does you can just pull it back and away you go and no i haven't painted my nails this is all black wash <laughs> so there we go um that's those bits basically how to do it it can be a bit tricky 
obviously these are the other rear nozzles which are going to be going in the back here like that with all the other bits and pieces and in here what we're going to do is actually drill out sand off flush i'm going to replace this entire back end with photo etch as well okay so we're still working on this um intake thing down here now what i did last night i literally got a bit of um our oh, thinned um thinners here um sorry uh, putty and I've actually just plonked a little bit down there because we had a couple of little cracks, things appearing and bits and pieces going on. So obviously we've just popped that in there just to take care of any little gaps and bits and pieces in there. What I've also done is I've got a sanding stick, cut it very, very thin. I've taken the edges off so it doesn't scratch as it goes in. And now we're just inserting that in there just to polish it off and get rid of any rough edges and bits and pieces like that. Because obviously we've taken care of this seam on the inside, um, but these outer ones, um, obviously you can't do that until it's in there. So what we've basically done is just try and gum it up as best as we can in there. And then we've just got in there with the sanding and we're doing it. And every now and again, clean it out and then just give it a bit of a lick to give it some moisture. And we just get in there and just polish up all those areas just to smooth it all out and give us a nice seamless finish. So we're doing that just like that. And then what we do, we get in there with a bit more acrylic gray paint, just to take care of any little bits and pieces in there. With every coat that goes in there, it's gonna give it quite thick. The nice thing as well, with intakes, when you look down them, they almost have that thick, heavy duty plastic look to them. Um, they're not exactly tiny and smooth and shiny. They tend to be very smooth, but quite dull in there. Um, so although it's one of those areas where you're gonna to have to have a good look to see it, it's well worth it, because if anybody does pick it up to have a good look at it, uh, to scrutinize your work, so to speak, you, they'll automatically look for that seam in there and they'll notice it's fine. Um, obviously we've got the top canopy on there now, that's dried and very nicely in there as well. Um, the only mistake I did make, I should have cleaned up the actual pirate site before I put the canopy on, because obviously it's a bit of a, a tough thing to get in there now. Um, so we're just gonna to have to be a bit careful as we give that a sand up, but we can still get in there just like that. So we just cleared that a bit of a clean, a bit of a sand, just to polish that all in nicely. So there we go, so that's in. Um, let's say we're still working on with the PE as well. We've got the bits and pieces in there. Still got to sort out this back end and get that tube completely fitted in there correctly. Got some uh, little, obviously the, um, uh, night formation lights still got a few to go on these um, the outer pods here as they fit on there as well so we'll take care of those get those on we can get the air brakes sort of sat on there although we're going to have it so it can be open or shut um, a few little cleanup areas still to do as you can probably see on it and then we can get in here with some white paint or just it's a slight off white paint the actual color, uh, color that we use in here so we're going to use white with a drop of gray just to give it that sort of that texture um, and then we can get the wheel wells done that intake all done sorted up and we can get that all totally masked up and we can get going with some paint Okay, so as you can see, we're priming up now, um, using quite a dark grey, to be honest, probably a little bit darker than I'd like. Obviously, usual thing, I've sprayed the actual top of the cockpit um, area already, so it'll show black from the inside. And we're literally going to spray the entire thing, just a light dusting all over, but we're going to give it quite a bit, um, to be honest, over the actual photo etch parts, so we can see how they're laying. Um, on there because we want those to obviously bed in very well same things we're going to give it a damn good squirt up the actual um, intakes and everything else like that so we can have a good look and make sure we've got no gaps lumps or bits and pieces that are going to be a problem area in there the usual thing with all our priming like we're doing here this is literally just to check we can check our seams obviously these ones down this uh, wing root and that they're actually looking very very nice there I'm very pleased the way they come out so I'm going to carry on and prime the entire thing okay there's a couple of little areas of white which are going to need touching up but what we're going to do is just going to take care of the wheel wells and intakes now for that we're just going to use a little bit of white um, our usual way of doing it quite a thick mix even though we've primed around the area, I haven't gone right in there to fully prime it as such. So we're just giving it a bit of thinners in amongst the actual white paint, which is almost a neat mix, just to sort of get it going a bit. Okay, white's coming through, so we'll do now just a spray. And 
the white, which as you can see is quite a, a speckly sort of jaw. But that's just because it's literally a very thick mix. And what we do, we just thin that down a little bit more for the actual air intake itself. So it's a nice wet mix going in there and that way it'll fill any of those last minute little holes. I'm all happy with the way it is in there. It's basically seamless all around. Let's get the air pressure. Uh, there we go. So this finish off in the bay with that. Okay, then we're going to go nicely into the actual Plenty in there, it doesn't matter if it goes too much everywhere because it will dry quite quick. Just make sure you have got it everywhere. And there we go, we'll leave those to dry. Okay, we'll do the inside of the wheel well doors and everything as well at the same time. And we're gonna let that dry then and then we can get it all masked up. Uh, ready for the top coats of paint to go on um, and as those are drying as well we can actually go around and have a good night. right as you can see we've got the speed brake on we've just done a few little touch-ups here and there which uh, little areas um, which weren't really happy with um, also I put in the actual doors as you can see they're in there just to protect that so what we're going to do now is our usual thing with a little bit of pre-shading usual thing flat bike a little bit of on the old air pressure probably about 20 25 psi and what we're going to do is literally run around and fill in all these big panel lines with large ones and then obviously we'll come back and we'll do the smaller ones so we say it doesn't have to be neat it doesn't have to be the same at all we're just looking to a bit higher air pressure and there we go, and what we're going to do is just pick out all these panels. Just like that, we're going to go around the entire model and completely appreciate it. Okay, to, to protect the intakes, usual thing, we've got a very piece, a thin piece of jammy tape, which is the thin uh, blue stuff here. Very, very flexible, very, very handy. And that just bends all around on the inside, just like that, up the lip. And that protect the white area in there. And obviously it will give us a nice sharp gray um, area for the front part. Then obviously what we need to do is there again, just protect all that duct. So got some old sponge lying around here, which obviously I've had lying around a long time and use it for all this type of thing. So we just get a cocktail stick and we're not trying to ram it all the way down and in. We're literally just trying to get it so it covers up any holes that appear down the side of that intake trunking. So obviously when we spray, we'll get a nice clean finish. And there we go. So that's both of those in and done just like that. So that's ready. Okay, what are we gonna spray this with? Um, there's lots of various call outs for various bit of different colors and various bits and pieces, but obviously trying to get the right colors, if you're using an enamels, you can go right the way through. Now, if you want the official colors for this, overall it's gonna be barley gray, which in uh, British terms is um, 626, um, which is our BS number, or uh, was it 318C, if you're being technical. Um, Admiral tree gray, we've already done for the cockpit. Now, leading edge, flaps, slats, things like that, 
on them are 3628. It's slightly la uh, lighter than RAF sort of ocean gray color. So you can add a little bit of white to it and do it that way. And this is on these leading edges here on the front planes and all the little leading edge bits, um, obviously on these pylons and bits and pieces and up the tail. Um, now the thing is the actual ray dome itself is flint gray. Um, the closest number you're gonna really find to that is gonna be 36314 is in your FS number for doing that and then obviously inside the intake it's not white what I'm going to do is when I go around and do a little bit of post shading I'm going to post shade in there to dirty it all up and to do that I'm going to use a little bit of smoke but if you are want to be technical over it the actual inside of the ducts not this leading edge business but the actual deep down inside um, that leads to the actual fans the compressor fans um, the closest thing you're going to find to it in FS numbers is really 26492 um, which is like an off-white grimy white type of color so that's the thing for that so what i'm going to do i'm really going to crack on now we're going to do the ray dome get that painted up and we're going to do some things like this the tail um, the leading edges of the tail and on the flaps and get them painted it with it now for using flint gray because obviously, you know, at the factory it's flint gray, once it's been used a bit, it tends to dirty up, grime up, usual things like that, like any modern aircraft. So I'm gonna actually use some sky gray and just hopefully when I come around with the post shading with it, it will dirty it all up and marry it all in. But I'm quite happy with the way it actually goes on and looks. So we're gonna go with that on the ray dome and then obviously on these tails and, and bits and pieces like that and then for other bits, we can then dirty them up. But don't forget, because these are um, a, an absorbent area, um, for actual, you know, the radar hits it, they're designed also to absorb the actual radar, you know, coming at them. And obviously for the nose as well, it's easier to get the radar in and out. They tend to have a sort of a matte type of finish to them. Um, certainly if you're looking at F-16s, F-15s, they're the easiest ones to spot because when they're at the factory, those noses are very light. Over time, they're like, if you ever touch one and put your hand over it, it's almost like a rubber coating over the top of them and that's how it absorbs in. Downside, it's very, very dirty, very, very quick. So that's why if you look at F-16 and F-15 noses, unless they're brand new and just come out of the paint shop, they're gonna be very, very different stages of dirtiness. So, you know, usual thing with the Typhoon, it's a modern aircraft at the moment, give it a couple of years and it wears in, they're gonna get darker and dirtier. So there we go. So we're gonna start off then with the nose and get these bits done. All right, so we'll just get the compressor on. We've just loaded up with some Sky which is XF19 and we're going to do this nose. Now this is quite a thick mix because we want it to go on as it does in real life and don't want it to be polished or anything else like that. So the airbrush as you can hear is sort of struggling with it a little bit to get it on. Don't forget, use the thing dry off as you go. And also remember, on this nose, there's a seam line. It's a one piece, you know, obviously with the kit, but there is a seam line that runs right the way through the middle. So make sure you take care of that. Okay, we just let that dry off a minute, obviously handling it, and then we can work our way around. Check your references, look at your pictures. Um, the instructions don't really call out exactly perfectly the right area where these things all are but you know it's as near as you're going to find it in a lot of areas just remember it's sort of leading edges that get it um, and don't forget your tails now i've still got mine on the sprue got one on the sprue i'm just about to take them off and we can spray them up separately so i'll just carry around and do the rest of these parts 